Hello guys, this is Dr. Asif Nawaz. Uh, welcome to my today's session that is pathology portion of MRCS study with me that is part A. So uh, previously you have seen the first lecture of pathology that is surgical pathology related with physiology. Now the sole pathological topics uh, from uh, the radar notes about the general pathology as well as uh, some systemic pathology as well. So first things first is an acute inflammation. Inflammation is the re reaction of the tissue elements. Uh, let me highlight. Inflammation is the reaction of the tissue elements to the injury. So vascular changes occurs resulting in generation of protein rich exudate that is exudative fluid. You all know that exudative fluid comes uh, due to the inflammation that is protein rich fluid. So long as the injury does not totally destroy the existing tissue architecture, the episodes may resolve with restoration of original tissue architecture. So this is the uh, very basics uh, uh, I see. So what is the inflammation? That is inflammation is a reaction of the tissue elements due to injury. So there are some changes that is vasodilation occurs and the persistent throughout the inflammatory phase. Inflammation, inflammatory cells exceed the circulation at the site of injury. Okay. So inflammatory cells, so what are the inflammatory cells that is neutrophil, macrophage, plasma cell, lymphocytes. So in case of acute inflammations, there uh, usually neutrophil will be found there. Uh, specifically if I say a single cells or that inflammatory cell that is neutrophil. And the equilibrium that balances Starling forces, Starling law. Okay, so according to the Starling law, capillary bed is disrupted and protein-rich fluid exuded will be formed as a vessel wall, also become more permeable to the proteins. That means protein will come through the extracellular space, space from the blood vessel. In that case, that protein will bring some water from the blood vessel to the exterior. Now the high fibrinogen content of the fluid may form fibrin clot. So this has the several important immunomodulated modulatory functions. So these are the stages of acute inflammation that is um, resolutions that is a sequelae. So there are some vascular changes first and then there are some fate or sequelae. So some acute inflammation will res res resolute or uh, that is healing okay resolutions so typically occurs minimal initial injuries and the stimulus removed and the normal tissue arch architecture comes out and the organizations or that is delayed removal of the exudate if that means acute inflammation will persist if uh, the removal of the exudate will delayed and the tissue undergoes organization and usually fibrosis ultimately it goes and form fibrosis Separation that is typically formation of the abscess or an empyema and the sequestration of large quantities of dead neutrophil. Okay, so separation so there is a separation occurs then sequestration of large quantity of dead neutrophil that is formation of pus uh, that is abscess formation. So, what we get there uh, in the in the abscess we usually see pus that is nothing but a dead neutrophil or some crystals or some debris or uh, tissue um, tissue organisms dead organisms also present there and if some inflammation becomes chronic okay so in that case progressive chronic inflammation acute inflammation turns on to do on to the uh, chronic phase that is a couple inflammatory repar uh, rep reparative activities and usually occurs initial infection and separation has been inadequately manage where it occurs because if uh, separation occurs then you have to incision you have to make an incision to the separation because you have to remove the pus uh, so that it will uh, so the antibiotic can can uh, give strike back to the um, lesion if you make delayed the incision that inflammation will spread out or sustain and causes chronic inflammation 
so what are the causes of acute inflammation that is some virus exotoxin and endotoxins released by the bacteria chemical agents and physical trauma uh, trauma uh, that is hyper sensitive reaction like anaphylactic reaction latex inflammations uh, sometimes uh, blood transmission related uh, reaction Graves disease Hashimoto's thyroiditis these are the things and the so tissue necrosis some inflammations can cause necrosis some has some central necrosis some has diffuse necrosis so uh, these are may be seen in the microscopic slide presence of neutrophil as a polymorphonuclear leukocytes is the histological diagnostic features of acute inflammation very very important i already told you that which cell is very much present there and and that is and uh, and that is uh, neutrophil you know so now the chronic inflammation okay um chronic inflammation may occur secondary to the acute inflammations in most cases chronic inflammation occurs as a primary process that is a sequelae of uh, acute inflammations and so uh, the, these are the broadly viewed as a persistent infection with certain organisms such as microbacterium tuberculosis it's uh, one of the chronic inflammatory agents with the delayed type of hypersensitivity reactions and inflammations prolonged exposure to non-degradable substances such as silica and now the prolonged exposure to non-degradable substances such as silica and the suture materials which may induce an inflammatory response okay so there are some immune autoimmune conditions involving antibodies formed against the host antigen here you can see there are some difference between acute and chronic inflammations that is acute changes to existing vascular structure and increased permeability of endothelial cells so that is usually occurs in the inflammation we all know that and the chronic inflammation is angiogenesis predominant so what is angiogenesis is one of the important things angiogenesis means formation of the blood vessel to the affected uh, reason like inflammatory reason so mainly angiogenesis is a characteristic of malignant cell or uh, that is um, you know, vascular endothelial growth factors that is VEGF so these cytokines is usually released from the chronic inflammatory cells and that causes angiogenesis another uh, that is inflamed from neutrophil so neutrophil is the organism and the, in, in case of chronic inflammation that is macrophage plasma cell and lymphocytes are predominant now the chronic inflammatory cells has some sequelae that is suppuration complete resolutions abscess formation and chronic inflammation healed by fibrosis so these are the fate or uh, sequelae but in case of chronic inflammation healing by fibrosis is the main result now the granulomatous inflammation a granuloma consists of microscopic aggregation of macrophages that is epithelioid cell mm, here the epithelioid cell which is microscopic aggregation of uh, macrophages the large giant cell may be found uh, uh, at the periphery of the granuloma so it's also called the langhans type of giant cell langerhans cells okay langhans type of giant cell specialized cells in case of tuberculosis so there are other cells like syphilitic giant cell uh, in case of lymphoma that is red stainberg giant cell so these are the uh, cells which is usually present in the granulomatous inflammation like tb like syphilis like hoskins lymphoma uh, like other this because here you can see the epithelioid uh, cells surrounding the area and the central necrosis and the here uh, you can see some deep areas uh, it is called the giant cell so growth factor released by activated macrophages including agents such as interferon fibroblast cost factor and such as interference may have the systemic features 
resulting systemic inflammations uh, which uh, may present in individuals with long standing chronic inflammation. So, here this is a colonic Crohn's disease also called the non uh, non granulum uh, non supportive granulomatous inflammation ok. As you can see here this kind of uh, cellular pattern of mucosa of the colon. Now the gastritis, so there are some gastritis that is inflammation of the gastric mucosa. So there are some types, a type A, B, reflux, erosive gastritis and stress, ulceration and many tears disease. So in case of type A, it is usually loss of intrinsic factor of Cassel, loss of parietal cells, okay. Uh, circulating autoantibodies of parietal cell, reduction of the cell mass and hypochlorhydria or acalorhydria in the last stage absence of antral involvement hypochlorhydria causes elevated gastric level stimulating enterochromaffin cell and uh, due to stimulating enterochromaffin cell a huge number of histamine will be released and that will be causes that will stimulate gas g cell of the antrum and causes increased amount of gastrin so this gastrin will be stimulated due to excessive amount of enterochromaffin cell Enterochromaffin cell activities. Okay. In this case, adenoma or gastric polyp may be found. And a type B antral gastritis uh, associated with infection with Helicobacter pylori infections. Okay, that is a type B. Intestinal metaplasia may occur in the stoma, stoma and requires surveillance endoscopy. Peptic ulceration may occur. So this is type B gastritis. Uh, it is due to uh, Helicobacter pylori or uh, sometimes intestinal metaplasia occurs hmm? and uh, that patient might have some serial endoscopic surveillances for uh, about 2 to 3 years uh, if you if he or she get any polyp or uh, uh, such kind of things then EMR that is endoscopic mucosal resection might need it. Now the reflex is of disease that is GERD sometimes it is called and the bile reflexes to the stomach and a post surgical and due to failure of the pyloric functions. So erosive gastritis that is gastric mucosal barrier disrupted due to NSAID mainly. So NSAID causes uh, secondary to the COX-1 inhibitors uh, erosive gastritis mainly caused by the NSA because NSA will block the prostaglandin secretion that that prostaglandin will maintain the blood uh, then uh, gastric mucosal barrier uh, that prostaglandin increases the blood circulation to the stomach and that will uh, form a wide uh, uh, the wide uh, thickness of mucus barrier which is maintained by the prostaglandin because prostaglandin increase the blood flow to that area which will maintain the barrier. Now the stress ulceration uh, the results of mucosal ischemia due to hypotension or hypovolemia. The stomach is the most sensitive organ in the GI tract to ischemia following hypovolemia okay? because hypovolemia can cause GI tract ischemia. So diffuse ulceration occurs, prophylaxis of acid lowering therapy and the sucral fate may minimize their complications. Sometimes we can see in case of burn patient there are some curling ulcer or acute gastric dilatation uh, in the stomach. Uh, this is the sequelae of burn. In that case uh, that ulcer is called curling ulcer, one kind of stress ulcer. Okay? Best, uh, that is uh, in case of burn that blood vessels will be um, narrowed or fibrous. In that case, ischemia occurs and, uh, due to the and hypovolemia because burn is a condition where hypovolemia is more prominent than the other uh, type of gastritis. Minute is a premalignant condition, so you must remember that. And the hypertrophy of the mucosal gastric fold exceeds in mucus and production and hypochlorhydria that is acalorhydria or hypochlorhydria causes uh, that is this is also a premalignant condition as well. Acute intervened porphyria that is is a rare autosomal dominant conditions defect in the pro prophobilinogen DMINS enzyme. 
includes the biosynthesis of heme. We know when hemoglobin broken down, then heme and globin portions. Heme portion will turn into porphyria, okay, because heme will be uh, disso uh, dissociated and broken down and form a different organism, different uh, conditions like, like porphyria, because it is denaturated by the uh, D minus probabilinogen D minus, okay. Uh, this is the toxic accumulation of the delta amino levulonic acid and the uh, profibilinogen. It is characteristic present in the abdominal and neuropsychiatric symptoms 20 to 40 years uh, world. And the features is abnormal abdominal pain and vomiting. Sorry. So, what are the features? Abdominal pain and vomiting, motor neuropathy, depression, and hypertension, tachycardia. Mostly, it is not been diagnosed because as it is a rare disease. So, it is usually missed because in our country or in our subcontinent, uh, we do not see this kind of patients like uh, the acute intermittent porphyry or that kind of patients. It is rare. So, neurological signs combined with abdominal pain, acute profile or elite poisoning until proven otherwise. So, I have seen a uh, MRCS part a question about a porphyria because you have to you have been given ECG ECG chart and then you will find there is a hypertension, tachycardia or uh, or HD depressions is like uh, inferior MI or MI like features. Okay. So, it is hard to hard to establish what ha uh, really happened in that case. So, serum level of delta amino levulonic acid and profibulinogen is the profibulinogen is the um, uh, diagnostic criteria here. Another one is a lead poisoning uh, along with the acute intermittent profile a lead poisoning should be considered and question given combination of abdominal pain neurological signs. Uh, seems like it is similar to uh, to usually the, the acute interpenal profile area. So, blue line gum margin 20 percent adult patients very rare in children very important and peripheral neuropathy. So, blood lead count uh, so blood lead level is a diagnosis. So, greater than 10 uh, milli mcg that means 0.1 milligram per deciliter are considered significant. So, full blood count is microsetting anemia and basophilic stripping and the clover leaf morphology very very important. So, clover leaf morphology and basophilic stripling is the diagnostic criteria along with the increased amount of lead in the urine. So, lead is usually present this kind of poison in case of radioactive area like Chernobyl like Russian uh, some continent where the nuclear nuclear reactions uh, or nuclear chain reaction is usually occurs. Uh, so, they usually uh, wear a lead sheet okay, to protect the radiation. So, delta amino levulonic acid is the sometimes difficult uh, then so management that is DMCA, EDTA, dimarcaprol and dipedicinamine. So, these are the agents is used for uh, for compensations of late poisoning. Now, the cell death. So, cell death uh, is another um, sole topic of general pathology that is um, cellular injury. We all know that there are uh, the necrosis that is macroscopic death of the tissue with uh, with the, there is a huge, huge uh, uh, we, we in, in our undergraduate level we have a learn a definition of neoplasia. Though I, I do not know uh, now, I do not remember that, but that definitions uh, I used to memorize by one breath. I can, I can wash it out, wash it out with one breath that is a uh, ba 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 ba. I have done that uh, 
that definition over and over for for many times uh, i was uh, very great in that definition i know okay so um, necrosis is characterized by the bioenergetic feature failure bioenergetic failure okay so loss of tissue perfusion result in hypoxia and inability to generate atp so the integrity of cellular membrane is lost and the loss of atp results from loss of energy dependent cellular activity or transport system so in that case influx of excessive water and ionic instability that is, that is calcium influx and more potassium efflux that causes membrane, membrane lysis so the release of intercellular content may stimulate the inflammatory response and the severe several type of necrosis are recognized like coagulative uh, liquefactive and caseous necrosis so these are the types so coagulative necrosis what it is it is the most commonest type and the later becomes the soft and tissue decayed by macrophage so macrophage uh, can digest the necrosis of coagulative necrosis elements so early phase of histologic appearance may demonstrate little changes Co liquefactive necrosis it is usually uh, happens in the brain and the coagulative necrosis uh, may be happen uh, in the soft tissue infection like heart coagulative necrosis of the heart Co uh, liquid co liquefactive necrosis uh, is in the cns and uh, occurs in the tissue with no supporting stroma caseous necrosis no definable structures can be necrotic uh, tissue amorphous eosinophilic tissue yes which which is histologically tuberculosis so tb has a caseous necrosis which has a central necrosis and surrounded by the epithelial cell and presence with langerhans type of giant cell okay now the neck gangrene gangrene is another example which is very much necessary in the surgical practice that is what is gangrene so gangrene is a macroscopic death of the tissue with super added putrefaction okay magnetic of the push tissue with super added putrefaction because it is a uh, one kind of death of the tissue okay uh, which may complicate in ischemia I mean, hemoglobin regenerates degenerates and results from deposition of iron sulfide which is, uh, is appeared as a black now the both wet and dry gangrene so there are two kinds of dry gangrene dry and wet gangrene uh, wet gangrene is offensive uh, very much offensive smell uh, come out from uh, the organs and the liquefactive components with super added infection can be sealed usually uh, smells oh, very bad now the fibrinoid necrosis uh, is seen in the arterioles in the hypertension and the mal uh, necrosis of the smooth muscle wall occurs in the plasma may exacerbate into the media with fibrin so so fibrin depositions occurs in the fibrinoid necrosis that is called and the fat necrosis that is pancreas and breast so fat necrosis in the breast and pancreas so direct trauma to the fat uh, or the traumatic injury of the fat and that causes fat necrosis like in the breast or in the pancreas so, uh, I, I know that that is breast or pancreas if I write down here it occurs in breast and pancreas okay apoptosis it is a program cell death that is normal uh, physiological nature when a cell dies it is washed out by the by the uh, body's mechanism that is apoptosis which is programmed uh, when this program is uh, lost or deranged in that case uh, neoplasia will arise or a tumor formation of a tumor or malignancy or adenoma uh, can be seen if the apoptosis process is not programmed or uh, or uh, De pro, uh, decentralized in that case uh, or autonomic in that case uh, tumorogenesis or the, the malignancy will come out in that patient so energy dependent pathos are reacted activated by the number of intercellular signal mechanisms so the results of activation caspase triggered by bcl2 family so this is the triggering factors and fast gene 
first ligand. So DNA fragments, mitochondrial function ceases, and nuclear and cellular shrink as occur. So these are the features. How can we know that the patient, the cells is within the apoptotic phase? DNA fragment, DNA is fragmented, and the cellular, nuclear and cellular uh, organism is shrinked, and mitochondrial structure, mitochondrial function will be seized out. Then the phagocytosis of the cell does not occurs, and instead of the cell degenerates by apoptotic body. So phagocytosis may mainly occurs in necrotic tissue or inflammatory tissue but uh, the, as this is the program cell death or it occurs in the normal cell in that case cell will degenerate by the apoptotic body now this is uh, one of the important factor that is disseminated intravascular coagulation or, or uh, what it is it is called the dic so from here uh, this is the blood related things so okay that is all about today's class uh, i know but pathology is very hard but you you need to go through the books uh, go through the text and and try to assess or assume uh, the topics or the uh, the what happens in each uh, each uh, topics like gangrene what are the characteristics of gangrene what are the uh, most important uh, areas of the characteristics you must remember because during exam or that is part emergency part a there is a, there will be a scenario or the acute inflammatory features then uh, they will ask which kind of cells is mo most predominantly present in that condition or what are the what are the process by which the inflammatory process is enhanced this kind of things uh, is asked in the exam so so you need to go through the each and every topics very clearly so that is all about our today's class uh, then in the next day i will go through the middle of the pathology from here that is dic and then up to the kobner's phenomena so there are different topics of important things one electricia achondroplasia the genetic surgical disease uh, up to that so three lectures i will uh, provide three lectures with the pathology then uh, uh, after these three lectures i will go for another topic of emergency that is faugia sheet so faugia is one of the professors of uh, royal colleges they provide few questions with their explanations i will uh, go through in uh, di different two videos and you will uh, uh, you will memorize just get that you will memorize that each and every every question every scenario because in the exam these scenarios is uh, slightly changed but they need the same thing they they will ask the same things about uh, the topics okay thank you very much for uh, patience hearing and i hope you will like my channels and subscribe my channel as well and, and like my channels and like my videos as well because uh, it's a uh, it's whatever a uh, learning process learning curve so each and every day you have to see the videos you have to go through the books and you have to practice question everything every times like 10 to 15 or 20 questions in each and every day yes you may need a huge time or or, or 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 a long time to assume but that knowledge will be concrete on your mind and that will be helped in your future uh, PG courses along with some like FRCS like FCPS or MRCS part A this knowledge will help you in each and every aspect of your life thank you very much peace